going on everyone it's Garnet Walters here again and I'd like to thank you for checking out today's video um if you haven't subscribed please press the subscribe button and press that little bell so you know when a new video comes out so today I'm gonna do another Q&A and I have some really good questions today so the first question comes from music Express on Instagram and he asked do you have a favorite chord quality my favorite is the dominant chord hmm do I have a favorite chord quality? I don't think I have a favorite chord quality. Um, I just appreciate what each chord brings to the table and then just use it accordingly. So I like major chords because they're very bright. Like, you know, especially when you get to the upper extensions, like 7th, 9th, 11th, and 13th. Um, I like the minor because it has like a dark sound. I like that. Um, I like... The sus chords, because the sus chords, they have a very ambiguous kind of sound, so they can go over anything. And I also like the sus 7 chords, like sus 4 7 or sus 2 7 chords, because the 7 just adds a little bit more color. Um, I like the diminished because not only is it symmetrical, but it creates a lot of tension, and you can use them as dominant chords. I also like the dominant chords because um, you can add other colors to make, create more tension. Um, so I don't think I have a favorite uh, chord quality. Um, I just go by uh, how the chord feels or what emotion I want to bring out. And, I mean, they all sound great to me. So um, I don't have a, chord, a favorite chord quality. So the second question comes from JG Keys on Instagram and he asks, what are your most influential records? Hmm. Most influential records. Man, this is going to be a difficult one. Hmm. Most influential records. Nope. Ah, oh, there's so many. Wow, there's so many records that influenced me. Um, Cause I have a uh, musical ADHD, you know, everything kind of grabs my attention. So I'm just going to give you my top five and this is in no particular order. This is just how it's coming into my mind. So number one, take six, so much to say. When I heard that album as a kid, I was amazed by the harmony and the blend and all the chord movements and stuff and how every line in the, in the chord went somewhere like it wasn't just a note just note 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 chord 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 like every note went somewhere you know and that one little move just changed how the chord felt so so much to say by take six that was a an, al an album that influenced me number two Kim Burrell's Everlasting Life. Uh, when I heard that album, I was literally blown away. I didn't know that gospel music could sound the way it does. I didn't, I didn't, I just thought gospel just had a specific sound. But in hearing that, I was just like, wow. You know, and that was, and it came out in 2000. And it's now 2018. And it's, and I, it's still an amazing record. I still go back and listen to it and still get some information from it. So, Kimberell's Everlasting Life, that was a good album. That's an influential album. And because of that album, I got put on the ASAP Ward. And with listening to ASAP Ward, I try to find everything that he did. Another album that influenced me greatly was Beneath the Mask by Chick Corea. So, a really good friend of mine, Randy Jenkins, who plays drums and, and keys. He told me about Chick Corea. And at the time, he was playing drums. He had um, Dow Young, who was playing keyboards and organ, and Al Cardi was on bass. And they had this sound that I'd never heard before. And I'm like, wow, they could play that in, you know, with gospel music? That's really cool. So I just asked, and, and you know, he just told me, like, they listened to Chick Corea. So um, I went and found the first seat I could, I could find, and Beneath the Mask was the first one. So I listened to it, and I'm just blown away by all the crazy sounds and chord progressions and stuff. And listening to Chick Corea and the Electric Band, 
you know, Chicory being a piano player, it opened me up to to hear what else he does. So I found out he did solo piano uh, records. And because I'm a piano player and I started off with classical music, so I figured, hey, let me hear how he sounds doing a solo piano thing. And I'm just like, man, he just sounds amazing. His ideas are just so different, you know? So because of listening to Chick Corea and the electric band and getting all that stuff and learn how to arrange and create really cool chord progressions and stuff, it led me to a path of finding out what keyboard players can do in terms of solo piano. Another album that influenced me greatly was Oscar Peterson's Night Train. And what drew me to that album was the fact that me starting off playing classical music, hearing all that dexterity and hearing, you know, all those fast lines and stuff, it just brought, it just drew me to his sound. And the fact that, you know, not only was his music so clean and everything, but it had such a nice bouncy feel to it that even if he was just playing the line by himself, like it had like a dancey kind of thing to it. So it made you want to dance, you know? So Oscar Peterson's Night Train, you know, was a, was a really big uh, album that influenced me. And I, and I still listen to it till this day because there's always something that I can glean from that record and because i checked out oscar peterson i figured out hey let me find out who he listened to and he listened to art tatum so when i checked out art tatum you know i was blown away and that's a video for another time the last album that influenced me musically it wasn't really an album but it was the song that led to me checking out the album and it was trap call quest electric relaxation so I remember I was out at the barbershop as a kid with my little brother and, you know, they had the, you know, music going or whatever and all of a sudden that song came on, that intro came on and I was just like, man, that harmony and then the groove was, it was just really, really chill and relaxed, but it still had like this grit and I was just like, man, this, I can't, I couldn't forget that song and even now when i listen to it it's just like the same vibe you know still feel that same vibe and listening to that album that's what introduced me to to hip-hop the final question comes from instant composer on instagram and the question is what are some things that guide you when reharmonizing music the main thing that guides me when reharmonizing music is keeping the melody because the melody is what people remember the most, and that's what they, that's what they identify with. So I stick with the melody. I always keep that as my foundation, and then after that, I start to build on what is it that I want to convey in terms of emotion. Like what feeling do I want to bring out? So the final question is from Instant Composer, and the question is. What are some things that guide you when reharmonizing music? Or there are a few things. The number one thing is to keep the melody out in front because people identify with the melody the most. So the melody is really, really important. Then I start to build around that in terms of harmony, inner line movements, and whatever emotion I want to put out there in terms of uh, how I... Re, how I change the chords and add chord progressions and stuff. So, for example, I'll just use the first five notes of Giant Steps. So, if I want to create tension, I'll just really use some uh, some weird, you know, chord voicings here, something like, and then resolve it that way. Or if I want it to be really happy. I could do something like this. I could do something like that. Or if I were to use a ballad like uh, Lush Life, I 
can change the chords up and do something like this. Now, I changed the chords up and add the tension and added some release points, you know, based on what feeling I wanted to put out there. So, the main thing is that I have the melody out there and that it sticks out so people can recognize it. But then I just put my own little twist on it depending on what feeling I want to put out there. And I use different things like uh, using block chord or I'll use a little move in movement. Do something like that. But it's all about just what feeling I want to create. You, I'd like to thank everybody for sending in your questions. I really appreciate, you know, the support. And it's really fun answering the questions. Um, again, and if you haven't subscribed, please press the subscribe button. Um, also press that bell so you'll know when new videos come out. Uh, i like to thank everybody for their support. It really means a lot. Uh, and share this video with your friends who are musicians. Um, I want to just help add value to whatever you're doing musically. You know, we're all on the same journey trying to get better. And um, I'm looking forward to learning from you all as well. So if you have any questions, you can also put them in the, the comments below so I can check them out. Or if you have anything that you want to add, please just put a comment below. Thank you for your support and thank you for checking out the video. Have a great day.